Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. On Sunday morning of June 12th, Jack Avery, a desperate and wanted criminal, was stopped for speeding just outside the small town of Hartsdale. Thus began the most terrifying day in the history of that town. All right, out of the car, mister. Somehow I gave you a little run for it. So why all the excitement, officer? 85 in a 40-mile zone. You know, you may be out to kill yourself, but I'm going to make sure you don't take anyone else with you. Well, I'm really very sorry about that. I was kind of anxious to get home. Just wasn't thinking. Let's forget about it, huh? May I see your driver's license and registration, please? Look. You give me a break, and I'll give you a break. And you won't have to list it on your income tax, either. Just your license and registration. You're liable to get yourself in a lot more trouble than it's worth, friend. I'll take my chances. Jack Avery, huh? Is that the Jack Avery? You know, I bet the sheriff would like to have a nice little chat with you. Look, pal. You're under arrest. Put your Sheriff Melvin, I've got uh, Jack Avery in the car. Jack Avery? Attempted bribery, speeding, and... Uh... And a lot of other things I suspect that we don't know about. And he's been involved in more organized crime operations than anyone I ever heard tell of. Morning, Mr. Avery. Yeah. Mind coming inside? Afraid I'll have to book you. I have to hold you till the highway patrol runs a check anyway. You're pretty well known, you know. Somebody else might want to have a little talk with you, too. Book me for what? Well, I guess you could pretty near take your choice. There's attempted bribery, resisting arrest. I'll use your phone. Help us out. Inside. Crowley's doing a few minutes. Have him drive you to pick up Avery's car. Bring it back here, huh? Right, sir. Inside, Mr. Avery. Just hold it right there. How about my call? Business first, friend. Well, Rose, get me Highway Patrol headquarters. Give me the boss man there. Yeah, thanks. There won't be anybody there. It's Sunday. Avery, for people like you, we keep the store open seven days a week. Oh, Mr. Matthews? Fred Melton, Hartsdale Sheriff's Office. How are you, Fred? One of my boys just picked up Jack Avery for speeding down the road here. What's that name again? Well, Jack Avery. Sure, it's worth looking into. I'll get back to you in a few minutes. Yeah, that's right. Run a make on Jack Avery. See what you get and let me know. Send Williams in. for speeding out on Route 40. Big deal, huh? I tried to pay the boy cash, and he got all worked up. A couple of big wheels are planning to hold me. They're going to run a check on your old pal. 
they figure something turns up, they'll be heroes. Well, I'll move on it right away, Mr. Avery. Where are you? Oh, it's a swell spot. It's called, uh... What do you call this garden spot? Hartsdale. The sheriff's office. You can't miss it. Hartsdale, Rick. Well, I know the area. Yeah, and it's not far from here. Yeah, and another thing. The sheriff's name is Melton. No, M-E-L-T-O-N. Hmm. All right. What's up? Oh, Ken, guess who's visiting the jail in Hartsdale? Somebody big? Jack Avery. Is that big enough? It sure is. What's the charge? Oh, this is small stuff for Avery. Traffic violation. Tried to bribe the officer that gave him the ticket. I'm running a make on him. You know, I'm willing to bet he's looking for somebody outside of Hartsdale. Yeah. That's a funny thing about Avery, the way everybody dummies up when it comes to making a charge. He's always got his boys behind him. They're rough and tough, and let's face it, people scare easy. Smells good. Oh, good. Well, you startled me half to death. Well, I meant to surprise you. Well, you certainly succeeded. What can I do for you, Mr. Just Rick. I want to use your phone. Oh, is that all? Well, certainly. It's there on the wall. Help yourself. If you'll excuse me, I'll keep at it here. I'm expecting my husband home for lunch. Yeah, your husband. What's his number? Why, it's 112. My husband? He's the sheriff, isn't he? Yes, yes, he is. All right. Hartsdale Sheriff's Station, Sheriff Melton speaking. This is Jack Avery's friend. Yeah, well, I'd like you to release him. What do you mean you can't do that? You wouldn't want me to take that attitude about Mrs. Melton, would you? What are you talking about? Is this some kind of a joke? Well, that depends on your sense of humor. Look, I don't think I'm getting through to you. I better put your little wife on the phone. What are you doing? What are you doing with that gun? Now, you tell him, lady. And you tell him I mean it. Tell him. Fred? Oh, Fred. You'd better do as he says. Helen, don't worry. Do whatever he says. Now, put him back on the phone. He wants to talk to you. Okay, Melvin, now get this straight. If I don't get Avery back, you don't get your wife back ever. Got it? Now, you don't say anything to anybody. You just sit tight and wait to hear from me again. In about an hour, I'll let you know where and when to deliver Avery. When you do, you get your wife back. But not till we're safely on our way. Maybe around midnight. You got it? I got it. Why? Why are you doing this? Your husband's bitten off a little more than he can chew. Mr. Avery's a very big man. Now, let's go. All right, Miss Melton, no, get in there. Rose, get me Highway Patrol headquarters, please. Mr. Matthews. So that's the way it stacks up, Mr. Matthews. He'll be calling back in less than an hour. All right, all right. Take it easy. We'll be out there before you get the call. Yeah. There's a word on Avery. That's what I asked for, but not what I wanted. Police in the next state want him for murder. No wonder he's so anxious to get away. Yeah, come on, let's get out there. we'd find just the right place so easily. Things are going better than I expected. Maybe they are, and maybe they're not. You can't be too sure, can you? Well, lady, you better hope they are. Or else you got no chance at all.
Lady, another smart move like that, and you won't have any chance at all. I sure hate to ruin your son. And it's tough to handle a thing when you're kind of personally involved. Yeah, I know what you mean, but look, just take it easy. Things are going to work out. You don't need to kid me, Mr. Matthews. I've been in this business as long as you have. I know what Helen's chances are. Do you? What do you mean? You sure you know what her chances are? Well, I know this much. I know, for instance, you can't go around emptying out jails just because some hood takes a hostage. I guess I called you hoping I'd hear something different. But I know better. Can't send for the chopper. Have him come in the back part of town. Tell him not to land till we tell him to. See, boy, still locked up? For now. Okay, let's see. Then your call's just about due. We'll sit on it till then. Look, if he wants you to let him out, let him out. Go on inside and relax. Well, it's time for my telephone call. 112, wasn't it? Yes. Now, you stick close by and don't go out the traffic to play. I may need you. Understand? Yes. Hartsdale Sheriff's Office. Sheriff Melton? Well, you're right on time. Well, I didn't want to disappoint you. All right, what do you want? Well, for one thing, a car for my friend. And Mrs. Meldon and I were wondering if you'd call Mr. Avery to the phone. Yeah, well, we got a few specifics to discuss. He's locked up where he belongs, and where you and your whole... Come on, Sheriff, let's not get cute. All right, just a minute. The friend's on the phone. Yeah, Rick? Mr. Avery? Just drive east. When you come to the intersection of 104, just keep going until you come to the first dirt road. Well, we'll be there. Okay? It'll do. My car. It's in front. You know, you'd love to tell me I'll never get away with it. But you're just not sure. I'll see you. I sure hope so. <laughs> Well, to get started? I don't get it. I let him go. You told me to let him go. Milton, we've got no written guarantees, but I think if we play it my way, we've got a chance of getting your wife back. Play it the other way, we're dead. Are you sure, Mr. Matthews? I said it was a chance. Now, look, you stay here. And don't call us, we'll call you. You know, it's, it's, her, it's her birthday, and I was going to bring this box of candy. It's her favorite. Well, we'll see that she gets it. Can call the chopper on the radio. Yeah. Milton, let me tell you something. This stooge isn't kidnapping for money. All he wants is Avery. All we want is to get your wife back and those two guys. Oh, I know it's a risk. Please, will you play along with us? Anything. But, Mr. Matthews, I guess you know we're compounding a felony. Yeah, I know, but keep it on the QC, will you? Helicopter, bye. Stand by. Here he is. Thanks. This is Matthews. You're following the light blue sedan. The license number is 6 John 250. Repeat, 6 John 250. He's traveling east. Got that? Dead for I don't want him to know you exist, so fly nice and high. Use the glasses. Now we're in an undercover car. You're going to have to spot him and talk us in. 10-4? 10-4. Hey, As Jack Avery proceeded toward his rendezvous, he was unaware that he was being followed by air as well as by land. Beyond the present, Matthews had no plan. It remained first for Avery to lead the highway patrol to the point of contact. Helicopter 2150, still traveling on the main road, heading east at a pretty fast rate of speed. Hold it, pull over to the side. Climbing a little hill. Seems to be looking back in your direction. Ten four. Guess he wants to make sure he's not being followed. Yeah, this one's a smart cookie. Helicopter twenty one fifty. He's on his way. 
again. 10 4. So are we. 10 4. Get too close, you may spot you. I've got a great spot lined up, it would never be found, and we can. Good, we'll discuss it later. Well, you want to follow me? Yeah, come on, get going. the intersection. Now, if we follow this road, are we well hidden? Come on, give us a signal. This looks like it's as far as you can go by car. If you proceed, there's a possibility you might be spotted. You kick up a dust trail on that road, they couldn't miss. What next? There's a clearing here. You'll pick us up. I'm pretty sure you were high enough so you weren't spotted. I'm sure I wasn't. Coming in. 10-4? Ten 10-4. Four. Ten four. Not bad, huh? Real stroke of luck. Look, if you ever want to see that hick husband of yours again, it's strictly up to you. Well, what now, Mr. Avery? Well, I thought you had all the answers. Well, I, I thought you'd like to stick around here for a while and figure things out. Now, what do you mean, for a while? Well, you got all the answers. I uh, haven't. All right. Now, we're here till it's dark. Good and dark. That's just in case that husband of yours decides to have us follow. Who comes up here? Nobody. Nobody at all. You're really quite safe here. Digger wouldn't dream of it. After all, we've got his pride and joy here to protect us. Well, what are we waiting for, then? Night. I'm leaving here by myself in your car. They don't know that exists, but they know I do, and they know my car. What about her? Well, the unidentified car is my protection. She's yours. Now, you take her for a nice long drive in a different direction from me. Give me at least four hours. After that, you can dump her and the car. It's your business what you do with her. Oh. What is it? My roast. It's still in the oven. Do you really think that husband of yours is going to feel like eating? Just think. All the hicks and clam diggers in Hartsdale are probably sitting down to their Sunday dinner now without any of your worries. Or yours. Now shut up. You're getting on my nerves. I don't 
on, sure thing. I don't get it. Hey, wait a minute. What? Take a look. Both cars must be holed up in that cave. Does it look big enough to you? Yeah, the entrance did. It looks like there's only one way out of there, too. Looks like it. Well, I hope so. That's where they're holding up. They'll keep us as well the light until they get out, so we can't let them get out. We'll have to go after them. Well, how? By surprise, Ken, by surprise. If they hear us, we haven't got a chance. Hey, is this thing float? I'll try anything. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. What do you got in mind? Cut the motor and drift down. Drop us close to the cave. The closer, the better. That's a neat trick if it works. It's gone. It's, it's our only chance, Ken. Well, are you with us? So far. When you drop us, start your motor. Got it, but don't go anyplace. Smoke screen? Yeah. We haven't got tear gas or time to get it. We're going to blow dust into that cave. All the dust we can, and we're going in with it. I hope we can see what's going on. OK, it's all yours. Mr. Avery, you hear anything? Like what? Like a faint motor noise in the distance. I'm sure she has. What? Doris, my neighbor, was coming over to supper early. I'm sure she's turned my roast off. Lady, you shut up about that roast. I'll be out in 48 hours. 48 years, you man. You got nothing against me that'll stick. You want to bet? I told Fred not to call us. We call him. Come on. <laughs> With us next week. Until then, remember, no matter how new, the safest device in your car is you. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week. <laughs>